Last time... The group runs into Trevor, the child leader of a group of orphans that is living under the city of Atlantis. Fat Deb wins him and the kids over by sharing her sandwiches and out-of-nowhere cookies. Trevor agrees to lead the three musketeers to the jail cell where Jed and Guy are being held. If Galaxy, Fat Deb, and Mimi agree to help him and the rest of the children escape from Atlantis. The group had to use their problem-solving skills on a word puzzle, and thanks to Ian, they managed to crack the password of the elevator that should take them right to Jed and Guy. My wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters! All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's gonna move on. Okay. Uh-huh. Welcome everyone to another splendid episode of Dungeons Ooh. and Dragons and Daughters. We are a fifth edition actual play podcast. I am Kurt, Daddy the Dungeon Master. To my left, we have Sam, who plays Mimi, our favorite druid elf, also the leader of the Three Musketeers. And to my left, we have Bertie, who plays Galaxy the Wizard Elf, who has an adorable corgi named Boom, and. There is no leader of this pack. There will never be. We're all a group. You're I'm the leader. And to my left, I'm we leader. have... The leader of the pack. Well, oh, I'm my gosh. <laughs> Fat Deb became leader when she killed that beholder. I so did. You needed our help. <laughs> oh, my oh gosh. No. Where would you guys have been without me? Although we did revise that. because... <laughs> no, we didn't. You all no, didn't. started pointing fingers at each other for the decision of leaving Azaki behind. And so Sam was willing to take responsibility for that, but that meant that she would be the leader. So I'm the leader of the three musketeers. Yeah, but I am. <laughs> but you agreed I would be if we left Azaki uh, behind. I agreed it, to nothing. It's actually now four you did. musketeers because we have boom. proof. It's Boom. Boom is a part of his pack. He's the actual dog of a pack. Yeah, well, I'm sitting next to an actual well, dog. Well, I'm the leader of the squad. All I'm right. Fat Deb. Cool. Wait, what is our, what is our Sorry, we called? completely got sidetracked. So because I just had to, you know, announce my leader. Yeah, who, who, Leadership. Who, who is our leader? Me! me. Fat Deb. Fat Deb. It's Mimi. There is no leader it's of this Fat Deb group. is, is oh, played random. by my blushing bride, Jill, <laughs> the mother of my children. It's true. Hi, Jill. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, a couple of quick uh, five-star reviews that we have Ooh. gotten since the last time that we recorded. Which was forever ago. This one is like from month. Chloe, dollar sign, exclamation point. Yeah. Love it. Love all the episodes and how the girls play Birdie and Mimi. You never know what's going to happen next. Cats, whiskey, chips, and salsa for everyone. P.S. Fat Deb's the best. <gasps> Thanks. I'm, I'm offended. Well, why are you offended? <laughs> I think she's just quoting what I always say. Oh, what? Wait, wait, wait. I know something. They said Mimi and Birdie. So, not me. Galaxy. It's me. Me. <laughs> Nobody likes you, Sam. <laughs> you, know, you have been forgotten. No, but you're fat. Deb. I'm Mimi, right? They said Mimi, but they said Birdie, not Galaxy. Because Birdie is not a name you can forget. Oh. We, we've yeah. got a, okay. another five star review okay. from Soccer. <laughs> well, thank Nate. you. Soccer Nate 98. Oh, well, it's a name. Uh, best D&D podcast ever to the creators of this podcast, a.k.a. the DM who wants to kill his daughters, <laughs> Galaxy who wants to kill innocent children, <laughs> whoa, 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 Mimi whoa, whoa. who has way too many pets, and <laughs> Fat Deb, enough said. <laughs> yeah. This podcast improves life by 110%. I love listening to this. I can't wait for the next episode. I want more Mr. Bok Bok. Yeah. Hashtag Mimi and Mr. Bok Bok forever. Yeah. I didn't kill any children. I was just thinking about it. You were willing it. to kill the boy. Thank you so much yes. for those uh, five-star reviews. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We love and you. Whole, Dad, why do you want to kill us? I am I am just setting up a situation. To and kill us. you girls are reacting to it. If you decide to get killed in the middle of it, that's your fault. You want to break us, Dad. Do you want this little boy? You're this not very good board? at protecting your children. You want it's a <laughs> fictional game. Child it's abuse. Real. Child abuse. Do you want this little boy to, to die? No. Crack the egg? Oh. Do you want to crack I'll the egg? I'll protect you guys, okay? Thank you. Yeah. But you're you're too fat to protect this. No, that's how I will protect uh, you. Okay. You just get behind her. Exactly. <laughs> good Even job. though she's only three feet tall. 
Exactly. We crouch behind her. <laughs> Roll up in a ball. Just be behind me. All nice. Good. All right. So since it's been so long since we last played, does anyone remember what happened? Yeah. Oh, that no. ten-year-old boy was leading us through the cave with his pack of hungry oh, children. No, I remember. We we did <gasps> stop. I remember that. <laughs> You don't know how proud I feel. <laughs> uh, bonus points to whoever can remember the little boy's name. Tommy. Close. Willie. Timmy. No. John. Teddy. Mm-hmm. Zachariah Smith. It was Trevor. How was that close? I. Because it started with a T. Oh, yeah, I suppose. And we no did some puzzle my, stuff. No one, no one got my Harry Potter reference. What? <laughs> nope. You're a wizard, mm-hmm. Harry. Moving on. Yep. You're a wizard, Harry. So uh, Trevor had elicited your help to figure out a puzzle that you had to deal with. It was a kind of a word puzzle with paintings that had, like doctors and pilots and other monsters what that were the in that. Answer? Uh, the answer was doorway. I knew that. And the the trick of the puzzle was that uh, the title underneath each of the paintings, you had to take the number letter out of the title based off of the number of creatures that were actually in the painting. So for like a uh, doctor, um, you would take D for just the one doctor that was in the painting. But for like pilots, there was three of them that were in there. And then you would have to take L as the third letter from the word oh, that was below the painting. There's no L in doorway. I know. That was just an arbitrary example. Yes, yeah, wow, Sam. Sam. But there's no L um, in doorway. Give him a break. Okay, we also gave him the kids a ton of food. That's and, true. Yep. And they also we also did some stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Good job, Birdie. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I'm so smart. So you I, remembered more than me. I do also recall like Deb had kind of like a chip on her shoulder when it came to Trevor. <gasps> did I try to eat it? You just you just thought he was a jerk for oh, whatever that's reason. Right, I kept picking on him. Yeah. Why? Ooh, I, I think he's know. a child. Oh, it says to someone that I kill that I want to kill children. <laughs> I think it was it was because of the uh, the. Alrighty <laughs> then, moving on. <laughs> Awkward again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come after me, or I will come after you. <laughs> With We're getting my far. <laughs> what? I'm cr- with You're my little army of dead children. <laughs> hey, with Kurt, you. I like your sweatshirt. Oh, thank you. With my little, Watch bottle it. With my little weak so why, don't you, why don't you get up and stand before the camera? I have I some tears in my eyes. You have tears? Yeah. Dad, you made Bertie cry. Because she was laughing so hard? <laughs> yeah, I did cry. You made when Bertie I laugh. laugh. Actually, no, I kind of laughed at so my So I tried to eat the self. chip that was on my shoulder when discussing <laughs> life with Trevor. No, it's, it's because you were still trying. You were still Danny, the encounter with the dirty the creepy. kid. The really super creepy kid with the teddy bear. Danny. Danny. I don't like Danny. Yeah, so that was still fresh in your mind, and so it made you not trust uh, Trevor or any other little kids. Now so, that's the kid who I want to kill. Like, oh, my God. Why do you want to murder any children? She's just not answering. She's just going off of that that five star review that we got. <laughs> I think I think that five star review person was I correct. Think, I think they're your hero. So you fi- so you encountered Trevor, who had a gun on him, if you recalled, and he also had like an oversized uh, army helmet on yeah, top I of his head. Say oversized jacket. And an oversized jacket, just like puffed up. <laughs> <laughs> It's cold down there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's not like he, it's like. And he's really tall. He's really tall. Oh, is he tall? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> I just, I just God. immediately started Good picturing kid. him in a trench coat, but it's a couple of kids that are like sitting on top of each other inside <laughs> this oversized coat, trying to pass themselves and off as an adult. that's why I didn't trust him? Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. he's very obviously a child, but he's six and a half feet tall. Oh, <laughs> I want to see how good what is he Hagrid? No. <laughs> Way to get us off track, DM. Right. Oh, 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 oh. So you encounter Trevor below the city. So you are in the bowels of the city of where all like the pipes and other electrical conduits and things like that run through. And Trevor uh, introduced you to the rest of his quote unquote family because there's a bunch of orphans and kids that are down here that have been living here for a while. And uh, he had asked for your help to get past this puzzle because uh, it will bring you to the jail area of where uh, Guy and Jed are at. They know that something is going on with the island 
And so they wanted, so in return for that, you were supposed to help them get out of here. That was all the recap, guys. That was all the recap. Wow. So you are now standing in front of the elevator, and it's the dings are going off on it because you solved ding, 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 ding. my painting puzzle. And ding, the doors ding, ding, open up. Ding. And it's lit and clean and nice on the inside, but futuristic. There's lots of polished and reflective surfaces that are inside. A little bit of a Muzak playing in there. Muzak? Muzak. Muzak. What is this Muzak? Is that even a thing anymore? It's oh, music. I don't know. <laughs> Karate. No, music is something they would play at like stores and everything. Music. Generalized. Wait, it, music's an actual thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the the least offensive music that they could think it of to play. It just dates your father. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just shows how old he is. Yeah, make I've never heard that word. You're 41. I thought you were just supposed to make it fancy or something. Yeah. Be fancy. Oh yeah. my gosh, let's keep going. Yeah, Sam. All right, so what do you do? What? We go through the door. <laughs> yeah, we step in the elevator. All right, you get in the elevator. Come. And we tell Mr. Trevor Tall Man. Boy. No, 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 no. Just, just a kid. We tell Trevor. With a gun and a helmet. And oh, that's right, he has a cigar. And a puffy <laughs> jacket. <laughs> okay. Uh, Trevor, we'll be back soon. Oh, no, I'm going to come with you. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's go. He gets in the elevator, too. Is there room for me? There is room for you. Is yes. it, it's a they, big elevator. It's a big elevator. Excellent. Is it going to do this, like, the um, the elevator music, so we're all, like, awkward? Music. music. Yeah. That's music. Oh, it is? That is music. Yep. So Trevor walks over to all the buttons, and there's a lot of them. And he pushes the very bottom one. It looks like that this elevator goes down another 20 floors. I, I don't have an, like this. I have an urge to just run my my hand over all the buttons. <laughs> and you follow that urge, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Ten <laughs> hours later. Don't do We're it. We're here. Don't I do read it. your mind and I do it for you. No, you don't. We don't have that much time. Do one of you do that? No. No. Okay. no we die of starvation. <laughs> don't. We. No. Okay, fine. I will. Everyone is looking at you in the elevator right now as you're like having this debate just... <laughs> no, no. with each other. No, we're just looking at each other in the eyes. Like we can tell what we're doing. I'm like, I'm like I want to do this. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. No, 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 I'm, no. Just like, I'm just like, no. We look away, and then someone's hand just starts to go, <laughs> and everybody, we do the whole staring we slap again. It. We slap, we just slap. <laughs> so the elevator starts going down. Ding. 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 Boring. And as you go from, from each floor, it seems to, to go without any kind of issue. But every now and again, like one of the floors, there's like a little bit of light that, that peeks through the opening of where the doors come together and every now and again you can see like a spark of electricity like giving you the impression that maybe there's something broken that's on some of these floors as, as you go by uh oh and but you get all the way down to the bottom ding Aww. and the doors open up ding and it's a fairly well lit corridor fairly good repair uh, doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of stuff that's that's broken or leaking or sparking, and uh, yeah, what do you do? Um, Walk. We start. Wait, can we see under there? Under where? <laughs> <laughs> I said under there. Yeah, and I said under where. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can we see like in the jail room? thing let me look at my little spells do okay, i have so something you'd have I to you'd have to move walls. down i never, didn't mention anything about jail that's just where you're going but okay well, for bre brevity's sakes okay we see a jail <laughs> yep, you move forward down the hallway her. and you get to some jail cells oh roll a perception check for me okay i'm pretty oh no i'm scared is that to everyone oh, oh, just to sam okay, good. you want to help her though use your dice i'm tray. always helping her you want advantage Okay. <laughs> you can do this, Sam. Give me, me, me. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Yes. So, you do notice that one of the jail cells looks like that there has been some damage done to it. Well, first off, nobody is in any of the jail cells. They are all empty. How many are there? 
There's about eight of them. So four on each side, lining the corridor. And on the right-hand side, about the third one, third one down, so almost to the end of the, the hallway, it looks like that the there is a computer panel that has been destroyed, and there is a little bit of sparking that is coming out of it, and it looks like that there's a little bit of damage to the bars and the gate that is on this jail cell. And it is empty. Oh, no. They, they probably escaped. Or did someone break them out? Oh. Or... There could be more jail cells, and this was another person who escaped. Is there any more jail cells? This is all of them that you can see. No. Uh, why? Why? Um, is the computer in any shape where we can like see security cameras? Not the one directly in front of this jail cell, but the other ones are intact. You okay, can take a look at those. So are they similar to the ones that we found in the building? Mm-hmm, they are. Okay, so and we remember Ian is with you as well. Ian, can we look in this computer to see what happened to them? Yeah, let me take a look. He goes over. He starts clicking away on it. He says, "Hey, y'all, come over here and take a look at this." Pulled up a video feed. It's me mooning the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong one. When was this recorded? When did when did Fat okay. Dab have time to do this? I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> oh gosh. And uh, you can see uh, in the video, it is a black and white recording that's kind of on like, uh, it, it, it's elapsed time. So it goes a little bit faster than, than what it's supposed to. And you can see uh, Guy and Jed inside the jail cell moving back and forth really quick because of the time lapse video and all that. But then it gets to a point of where you can see that Guy gets into, he's able to pry off a panel on the inside of the cell and he starts messing with the circuitry that's inside and somehow he managed to cause a small explosion that unlocked the jail cell and him and Jed were able to get out. Are we able to see what time this happened or the date? It happened a couple of hours ago. Oh, oh so on. they are not too far away. They can't be, right? That's right. So we need to get our, um, uh, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> get your what? <laughs> we got to get our, our, our sniffing hounds and, and get a scent on them. Okay, Boom. What? I don't know. Dad asked me what. Let's go, Boom. I take Boom okay, out. Wait, so Boom is still in my backpack, right? Yep. I take Boom out and yes. I'm holding Stubby. <laughs> I'm just petting Stubby. Oh, God, I forgot about Stubby. Stubby! What about Mr. Bach Forget about... Mr. Bachback, Mr. Fredrickson's? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bachback, how are you doing back there in my backpack? You're talking to Stubby? Mr. Bach oh, Mr. Bachback. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm great. How are you? Good. Do you still have your coffee? I do. Can you save some? No. Alrighty then. I'm going to keep drinking it. <laughs> okay. Do I have none left? He just starts screaming. <laughs> Why does he start screaming? Because he had so much coffee. Oh. <laughs> he I've had so much coffee! Ah! <laughs> Apparently that's what you do when you drink too much coffee. It oh, is. No, chickens. It's He's like, I'm so morning. wired! I'm going to scream it this three seconds. Three, two, one! Ah! 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 forever! Yay! And I just start petting Stubby. And she starts... He or... Is it a he or is she? We uh, do not know the gender. I think it was a he. He so starts they. purring. Roll an animal handling check. He starts purring. <laughs> Roll an animal handling he check. Starts purring. This is a feral cat that you just adopted I over the last day or so. I start poking it. <laughs> <laughs> Roll an animal handling check. No! All right, Stubby jumps out of your arms and runs no! away. <laughs> Fine! I did, didn't like getting poked by Galaxy. I, I look at you and I pick Stubby up. Roll an animal I handling check. Roll an animal handling check. <laughs> Stubby might run away if you're not careful. Oh here. my god, Dad, you <laughs> suck! Stubby! Okay, that's a pretty good one. That was a 12, and then 17! 17, alright, yeah, you, you managed to pick Stubby back up. and. But and Stubby pissed. shoots daggers at Galaxy, just like, I hate it. And I do this, oh, a cute little cat, so cute. Stay away so from vicious. Stubby. You already named him this stupid name. 
So, and based off of the video, you can get an idea of the direction that they did walk off into. So, you basically just know that they uh, they went back in the direction that, that you came from, but it doesn't look like that they got onto the elevator. It looks like that they found a, another path somewhere. Okay, guys, I'm going to get on my scooter. Follow me. Boom. No, boom. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Sniff that jail cell. See if you can smell them. And... His Follow ears perk scent. up and his tail Follow stops. Follow the just... scent. See, that's what I was talking about. Dog. I just forgot the name. We needed the dog to sniff the way. You forgot Boom's Boom. name? I don't remember a lot of things. <laughs> Boom. When I created him, Boom. there was a Boom. giant Boom. 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 And that's how I created his name. <laughs> I forget your guys' name half the time. What? I don't know. What's my name? I don't know. All right, so I, I do want to point out that, that Boom is not a real dog. He is a magical construct made out of the pieces of dogs. I remember that part. Yep. So if you're going to have Boom do this, then roll a, an investigation check for me, but you can do it with advantage because you are all helping Boom, <laughs> especially with Fat Deb out in front on her scooter. Yep. Plus... It lights up. Investigation. The scooter lights up. It glows. Uh, of course. Does I got a basket on the front. Investigation. To hold my sandwiches. Yep. Well, I got eleven, so I can re-roll. Yeah, you have. An, yep, you have advantage. I got streamers hanging out from the handlebars. <laughs> I got a bell. Was that a three and then a four that you rolled? <laughs> <laughs> a basket. All right. What's the total on that then? Twelve. Boom's investigation is that high? Oh, boom. Boom's investigation. I was rolling my investigation. Yeah, I'm sure. How is 12 high? No, th- she rolled a 3 and then a 4 and ended up with a 12. Oh, oh. Uh, boom doesn't have an investigation. Okay, so you got a th- you got a 4 then. No, no she, she didn't she realize this, so she g- she should yeah. get to roll again. Yeah. So, Boom heads off down the hallway. Oh my gosh. Going, <laughs> that going, would suck. No, Boom gets a like a minus 2. <laughs> It's really sad. <laughs> right, right. So that's why I was bringing it. Like, Boom well, is not me, a real dog. Well, let He's me just... see. Let me see. Oh, gosh. Four. <laughs> Four. <laughs> so you go down the hallway, and um, Boom starts, starts leading you down one of the one of the pathways, and keeps going. And you notice that the hallway starts to get. Um, a little bit more damaged and a little more rusted and like it's just they haven't been keeping up these hallways as as well and uh go along for a couple of minutes deb's out front on her scooter with he the just glowing lights on basket the with sandwiches in the front i have a bell and i have streamers from the handlebars because the glow okay i just want everyone to get this visual does that um okay. and i got a tutu on right now <laughs> where'd you oh get oh my god you're the weirdest I'm magical aren't i Am I magical? You are magical, yes. yes. She's so magical. I just get anything I want. And after after a couple of minutes, um, yeah, you take a couple lefts, a couple rights that are in there, you go straight, and now you're in, you're in an area that's not in the best of shape down here. But it's still lit up, and boom comes to a T in the hallway of where you can go left or you can go right. If you go left, it looks like it, that would probably take you back towards the direction that you came from and right would take you further into the depths of the city of Atlantis. And Boom looks back at Galaxy expectingly to try and get some more commands on what to do. Which everyone has the most scent, Boom. But it could be scent from anything. All right, roll another investigation check for Boom oh, with advantage. No. Oh no. We should have had Boom smell their cell before we left. <gasps> he did. He did. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Don't let her roll any more today. Uh, negative one. <laughs> Are you... No, no, oh. no, no, no. Or four. Negative one or four. Okay, so it's a four. Boom is <laughs> sucking at this. <clears throat> I I love you, Boom's Boom. Butt. <gasps> so dog boom, abuse. boom goes to the right. He's going down further into the city of Atlantis. Well, then we just don't follow Boom. But as far as you can tell, though, he's got the scent. He's got the smell, and he's he's. So we're going trusting that Boom. I'm not. Yes, but I'm. He- I'm hearing these rolls. <laughs> so is, in my subconscious, I'm not are trusting. You? Boom. This is this are is the really? role playing aspect of it. Of just like you can. So is there a legitimate reason why Fat Deb would not want to go along? I don't with this? trust anything Do, or anybody. How about, how about you roll an insight check and let's see if yeah, see if you you trust that Boom knows yeah. what he's doing. I'm intuitive. No, I I whispered to Galaxy. 
Um, Boom's not a real dog, so are you sure he knows what he's doing? Don't hurt what his did feelings. You say I Insight. Oh, dude, I got plus nine on that. Oh, wow. Oh, that didn't help too much. 17. 17. 17? Okay. I know things. All right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you're thinking in your head exactly what I had said before. It's like, Boom's not a real dog. Mm-hmm. It's like that nose. You have no idea what kind of dog that nose came from. It's I like, don't know. <laughs> uh, apparently, nobody's no. Knows. Apparently, the dog's no. nose that he got it from wasn't very bright. Cause, like, look at what he rolls. So what? yeah, you do, you don't trust that. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of a pun to say. <laughs> so you say what? I'm trying to process Sam's comment. I am too smart for the world. Huh? I'm smart. Word. Face of smartness. <laughs> wow. So yeah, you, you don't trust that uh, that Boom knows what he's doing right now. Yeah. So guys, guys. God. I have this feeling in my gut, and it's not just the sandwich rolling around. I don't <laughs> think we should trust where Boom is going. He's not very smart. Okay, let's turn around. Boom, and, come back here. And because of that, can you roll a perception check as well for yeah, me? I'll do it good. With advantage. Ooh. And remember, if you get a one, you get to re-roll ones. Yeah, no. I'll, okay. Okay, I'll cut 24. 24? Mm-hmm. All right. So, Boom starts to head down to the right. Down that hallway, and it's not as well lit as the other hallways that you've been through before. So, it's almost like that, that comical choosing the... The light and clean and joyful path on the in the forest versus the dark and gloomy and cloudy and growling monsters hidden in the in the shadows. And that's the one Boom's heading. That's down. That's the one that Boom is heading down. And that's really why I'm trusting my gut because I don't right. want to go down that one. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, especially since it seems like the path to the right takes you further away from the the spot that you started from the elevator that brought you down here. Also, there is a glowing purple figure that you see probably about a hundred feet away from you right now. In the right side? Yes. Boom! Come back here! And um, what would you get for your investigation? Or your 24. perception? 24? Okay, okay, so... So this, this figure, it looks humanoid, but its feet does not quite touch the ground. Do not. Hmm? Do not quite touch. Do not... What did I say? Does not... Do not quite. His feet does not quite touch the ground. <laughs> His feet. Wow. Thank you. I like it when people correct my grammar. <laughs> You're welcome. Especially on I don't. Morning. <laughs> its feet do not quite touch the ground. There you go. It just seems to be standing there, almost like it's nonchalantly like leaning against the wall. Is it kind of transparent? A little bit. Okay, so let's go see who that is. Yeah. Let's go ask I him agree. if he has seen. What if we have to battle it? But honestly, I feel like the right path, like the spooky one that you were saying, I think it's the right one because... Because it's on the right? Well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no. Because the clean one seems too obvious. Or is it they're trying to make it where, oh, yeah, obviously the bright and sunny one is the one we'd want to go down, so we... They're, they're actually like reverse psychology. Maybe, or maybe Jed and Guy went down the left one, which is the pretty and clean one, because it's pretty and clean. I'd, uh, Let's go down much. the right one. Information. I think we should go find out what that purple guy has to yeah. say. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Let's go. So you start heading down the hallway, and you get closer to it. Mimi, you start to recognize... You You get close enough, you get within 30 feet of this purplish figure that's there, and you recognize ah, the person. Crap. It's a monster. It wants to kill us. <laughs> we hate it. We Welcome, said, guys. We have to go fight I said you it. recognize this person. Oh, but we have you, to go kill it. the vampire. Can you roll a... Roll a religion check. Oh, no. <gasps> what? Actually, maybe, Deb, how about you roll a religion I check? Because <gasps> you're, you're really good at religion. I actually have plus six for it. 
Do you realize what well, I think it is? that Deb's religion check is pretty good. But I Plus recognize three. It. Plus three? Yeah, hers is better. Oh, okay, then yeah, you roll a religion it's check. It's mystical! Oh, it's mystical! <laughs> okay, I got 16. Yeah. 16 good. total? Okay. It's mystical! So you you definitely know that this creature is, is not a... It's a creature. It is not a person um, because it has no feet. It is just seems to be floating there, leaning against the wall. It's a little translucent. You can see right through it, and you know that this is a specter. It's a kind of ghost. Normally, from what you know of specters, is that they hate the living and would attack, like, immediately. But this one doesn't seem to be very, very aggressive or really even care about you that much. But the one thing that jumps out at you is that you can see what this specter is. It looks like a person, but it's just, it's purple, it's translucent, it has no feet. And do you remember way back when, when you got turned into a werewolf? Oh, God. There was a, a, a druid named On that helped you. Her name was On. Yeah. On. The opposite of off, On. His name was On. And he, <laughs> that just reminds he helped me you because he, he managed to entangle you and keep you safe and prevented you from hurting anyone else while you were changed into a werewolf. And then the next morning came along and you turned back into, into Mimi and he chatted with you for a little bit. Right. And then he turned into a, an eagle and he flew away at the end of it. This is him. He died. What? This doesn't sound so bad. Go talk to him. Yeah, he helped you before. But, but, but he said they're not friendly. They don't, they they don't, don't like one, humans. Yeah, but this one seems kind of okay. Maybe. It's not attacking us right away. He looks up, and he smiles, and he waves at you. Um, what are you doing here? He sort of just mimes, and he just looks around and sort of shrugs and puts his hands up at his side. Do like, you not know? He nods his head. So he does know or he doesn't know? Nods his head again. Okay, nod your head if yes, shake your head if no. He nods his head yes. Can you speak? Shakes his head no. How? Okay. Okay. Um. Be more specific now. Do you know why he's here? Ask him that now. Um. How? Uh. Do you know why you're here? Shakes his head yes. Is it good? He sort of shrugs. Ask if he's going to hurt us. Will you kill us? He shakes his head no. Okay. Ask if he saw our friends. You can ask him. No, I can't. I'm scared of him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So so uh. <laughs> if you're scared of him, did you stay back the 30 feet? And oh, so, yeah. Okay. My scooter halted right away. <laughs> right. Um, have you seen our friends Jed and Guy? He, sh- he shrugs. Dragonborn and a human. <laughs> a human. He nods his head yes and enthusiastically. Um, Point, um, if they came, it, which, is there like two different directions or mm-hmm. something? Point yeah. which direction they went. He hooks his thumb over his shoulder, so it's further down the dark and scary path. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he just hears in the distance. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, would you like to join us? He nods his head. And then pauses and then shakes his head no. You'd like to, but you can't. He nods his head yes. Ask if there's other scary things down that way. Do you know what's back? You would have to like yell that down the hall to her because you're still 30 feet back. <laughs> Ask if there's... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, just do it. Do you know what's further down the path that you pointed at? He nods his head, yes. Do I is a- it scary? Okay, do I have a... Do I have a- <laughs> oh, no! Do I, yeah. do I have a pencil? Uh, I don't know, do you? There's yeah, one sure. on the table. Oh, oh, sign language! No. Why? But I sign okay. language. Like, okay. Oh, you mean in the game. I thought you meant in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like there's one on the table. Um, wait, Bertie. I pull, don't know sign Birdie, language. Pull, we can pull out of Why your. Why do we need sign language, though? Bertie, pull that's out. That's how you can communicate. Bertie, can you pull out of your backpack okay? a pencil and a paper? Okay. Oh, okay. I get it now, Bertie. <laughs> so, um, 
Can you hold a pencil? He shrugs. I hand the pencil. His his hands go through the pencil at first, and then he seems to like focus and concentrate for a bit, and then he grabs it. Now, could you write on this paper anything that might be useful to us, or to, or if we can help you on this paper, please? <laughs> anything that could be helpful. <laughs> and we're desperate. Starts writing down just this huge <laughs> list. <laughs> Um, okay. So, yeah. So, he does actually start writing some things down. So, the first thing that he writes down is you need to watch out for a creature that's down here. Oh, no. He writes down Magic Hunter is the name of the creature. Is that that's Christopherson? Down here. He he looks at he pauses his writing, looks up at you, and shakes his head no. Ah, okay. And he says, uh, "Keep an ear out for the horn. That's the sound that the magic hunter makes as it's approaching." Mm. He also writes down, "Keep an eye out for fuzzballs." <laughs> um, are they monsters? He nods his head, yes. Oh, Are they that's... tiny? He motions and... <gasps> he actually... He starts to make motions with his hands with them about like three feet apart and then he kind of like looks at you and... <laughs> kind of your size, you know? Just like sort of mimics... He called me tiny! <laughs> <laughs> but it's like he's like... Brings his hand down to the floor like three feet off of the ground and then round. So like, fat <laughs> I take it as a compliment. <laughs> okay. And is there anything we can help you with? Like, yeah. He sort of sighs and shakes his head no. Can we do anything that, make, that will make you happy or like at peace? And he writes down, destroy the magic hunter. Is he the one who's keeping you like this or did something happen to you? He writes down real quick, uh, Magic Hunter trapped me. Okay. So if we kill him, you'll be free? He nods his head. Okay, we should. But he, like, shakes his head and waves his hands in, his, in, his, in front of his face like he's trying to wave you off of that idea. He's, he's just, like, trying to shoo you away. Just, like, you pick up that he wants you to just go. He doesn't want, even though that would help him, he does not want you to try. And he writes down, like, dangerous and underscores it twice. Okay. Okay. Well, good luck and thank you. Gives you a small smile and quick bow. And he just goes back to just standing there again. Uh, I, I give him a little more, a few more pieces of paper for him to draw or something in the meantime if he wants. <laughs> he, here's a few pieces of paper to keep you a little occupied if you want to like draw or something. Makes a paper airplane. Shoots at us. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. No, scribble something on the airplane so, like says go away. Makes paper airplane shoots at us. With a knock knock joke on it. What? I don't know. Okay. And so where should we go, guys? We give him one final nod, and we are off. Down okay. the dark path. Down the dark and scary path. To find this hunter? No. To D- not find the hunter. If I was listening. If we do get, have a chance to kill him, we'll kill him. Um, so I also want to remind you that uh, Trevor is still with you as well, the, the oh, little kid. Oh, my gosh. Forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> He's been so quiet. Um, He's like, wow, that was that was weird. I I'm, I've never seen that before. Mm. You don't see a lot of things. It's like, does this sort of thing happen to you, to you folk a lot? Unfortunately, uh, yes. Yeah. Huh. You know, I'm like I'm a kid. Yeah. But it, do, it doesn't mean I'm stupid. Okay. It's like I I know that you two are elves. You know that, right? Like, I know you're not from Atlantis. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I, I know you're not cosplayers. Okay. Do, do you remember? Just yeah. to level set, bring up, you two were like, we're going to a party. It's a yeah. cosplay party. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're dressed like this? We just 
kind of think you guys don't like elves and magic <laughs> stuff. Well, mo most of the people here don't like anything from outside of Atlantis. Um, so that's, I mean, that that's why the, the that magic hunter thing was was created is to like go after people and creatures that have magic because they're not from Atlantis. Oh. I also know a bit more about what's happening in the city right now. Okay. So I know that I know that the reactor is going to explode and destroy everything like soon, and that's why we want to get out of here. Okay. So. Again, I don't know where to take myself and all the other kids. Is there a place that we can go outside of Atlantis where we'll be safe? Um, there is a place. Where's like... Okay, pause. Where's like the Three Musketeer base again? Where's that? That's Mount Olympus. Okay. There is a place called Mount Olympus that is very safe. Okay. Can we... And can we sail there? Um, I have a boat, Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well there's, well, there's other boats here in Atlantis, too, that we could probably uh, take. But I have a cooler one. I have a fold-up boat. It's a fo oh, that does sound cool. Yeah. I want a fold-up boat. How'd you get a fold-up boat? I found it. Awesome. <laughs> we just started, like, talking about the boat. <laughs> it's like, how big is the boat? It's big. Nice. <laughs> I wanna, I'm gonna keep an eye out for a fold, folding boat too. Okay, I'll keep one out for I'll keep an eye out for one for you too. Okay, you you will, all you guys hear that right? If you find another folding boat, I call dibs. Okay. Okay. And dibs just like you just look and I'm just standing there eating my sandwich, <laughs> zoning out. <laughs> okay. Um. So hey, and I handed my doorknob in my inventory to him. Here, here's the my doorknob. Wow. Oh, okay then. All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> For this doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want you to erase doorknob from your inventory. You no longer have a doorknob. Because uh, Trevor's got it now. She yeah, why the heck did you give a doorknob? She finds a door and just rips the doorknob. I have a doorknob. You, you get trapped in a room and the only way you can get out is is by putting a doorknob on a door. You're like, no. That's going to happen next time. Thanks. So you start you start moving along the the scary path the scary and dark path. I it's told spooky. you it was the right one. And and it starts looping back around actually going in the right direction back towards uh, where you had started. It didn't look like that it was going to go that way, but it it just turned out there was enough like blocked passageways and openings that it just kept you going. And you do eventually find your way back to the elevator. Uh, there is one thing that is different though this time around there are three creatures they're sort of like milling about in the room or at the end of the hallway right in front of the elevator door and they're about three feet tall and they're covered in orange fur and they've got super tiny arms and kind of nubby legs on them are these and the fuzzballs yes you can Kind of, yeah, you would assume so. Uh, but they're kind of cute looking. They're, they're the just, balls. They're covered in orange fur. They, they each have a, kind of a weird number of eyes and they're uh. offset. Um, and they're different colors. Like one has three eyes of where it's like purple and green and on one side and blue on the other. And when I say on one side, it's because it looks like it's, it's almost like it's a... Uh, like a stuffed animal stitch that runs right down the middle of their body from like head all the way down to their bottom. That looks like the, the two halves were stitched together and they stitched together two halves that had different mismatching eyes on them. Yeah. And they're what? sort of... We need... They are the fuzzballs, aren't they? they are, you would assume so. They are the fuzzballs. My the goal fuzzballs. after we escape this place is to learn the bow and arrow so I can just shoot these guys. That's exactly what I was thinking. What, for real? Yeah. Oh, God. Twins. <laughs> <laughs> no fat dead. Just Twin powers activate. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Wait, now, did they say the fuzzballs was bad? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Um, said that they were monsters. Well, but are all monsters bad? Wait, can we sneak well, around? Maybe they look scarier Te than they are. Technically, On is a monster now as well, and yeah, he wasn't bad. Yeah, why can't they just be nice? Why can't anything in this world be nice? Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> on was nice? 
Why yeah. can't these fuzzballs be nice? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we sneak past them? Like, are they like generally dumb creatures? R- roll a roll an arcana trick. Do they move fast? Right now, it looks like they're kind of dopey and not moving very quick Nine. at all. Yeah, it sounds like me. Sorry? Nine. Nine? Um, and I'm sorry, what was the question? That you're- um, could we sneak past them? Um, it doesn't look like that you'd be able to sneak past them because it's a narrow hallway leading right up to the elevator door, and they're just sort of milling about there. Um. And that's when you hear this. Uh, the hunter's coming. This horn noise oh, comes no. from behind you. Still sounds like it's a ways away. Magic hunter and his fuzzballs. Come on, come on. We go. went the wrong way. The elevator's right in front of you. Go, it's just go, these go. These three fuzzballs are between you and it. Okay, um, would it be smart if we just ran, like, through them? Like, ran super fast where they didn't, like, they're like, what? Can, can you roll a uh, perception check for me? Well, can we become, like, invisible? I have invisibility. 24. <gasps> 24. You look, you're looking down, and. You could see that the elevator right now is back up at the top floor. Someone, while you were down here, got onto the elevator and took it all the way back up. So you would have to go over, call the elevator down, and so there's going to be some time before the elevator doors will open up. So you, so even if you could sneak past the, the fuzzballs, you would still have to wait for the doors to open up and the elevator to be there to get on. Um, okay, I have a few ideas. So, seeming. We could change in... We, I could change all of us into fuzzballs to look like them. Ooh. Or, we can all look the same. And as I cast greater invisibility, um, we all turn invisible. Because I can make it seem look like me, which is invisible. For the seeming. Well, if you could just make everyone invisible, why would you, why do you need the seeming? Well, it says either you, excuse me, <laughs> either you or a creature. Anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible, as long as. Do we know if these monsters have any weaknesses? So this is what. What, what did you get on your religion check before? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um, they don't have any weaknesses that you're aware of, but they are demons, um, as far as you know. So that typically means that they do have some damage resistances to them. So you, Uh so you imagine that Ian's rifle probably would be very ineffectual against these demons. With fire? Magical fire, absolutely, would, would work against them. Actually, no, I'm sorry. No, they would be resistant to fire because they're demons. Okay. What about poison? You know that they're probably immune to poison. How about lightning? Water? Um, so let me just tell you then. So that they are resistant to cold, fire, and lightning damage. Oh, gosh. And they are immune to poison damage. What the heck? Oh, man, I want to be one of those. Can I cause harm to them? As in the spell harm? Yeah. What kind of damage does that do? Could I do grasping vine to tie them to the ground as like a surprise attack? Like, uh, it's uh, necrotic damage for harm. So yes, that would work on them. Um, what if I like, ha- like, as a surprise element thing, <laughs> had vines come out and tangle them? So like, it happens so fast where they don't see it coming, and then we go to the elevator, hop in as b- before the hunter comes. So again, want to call out for you. The elevator is not there. I know, but if we call it. You have to call it, and it's going to take a little while for the elevator to come down. Okay. We call it. We become invisible. The fuzzballs are like, whoa, where did that sound come from? And then by the time the elevator's there, we just go on it. How would you call the elevator? Oh, elevator. Oh, elevator. This seems like the perfect situation for Mage Hand. I was thinking Mage Hand. <laughs> okay, Mage you Hand. Have Mage Hand click the elevator button. Yeah, because then it could be really tiny, right? This, this seems well, like the perfect thing. Why can't Mage Hand just scoop us up and bring us up there? 
Well, not, okay, Birdie, can you? how it works. No. Galic, I whispered to Galaxy, can you use my hand and click the elevator button so it gives time for us to go in? So, so the range yep. on Mage Hand is 30 feet. So you would have to get within 30 feet of the creatures in order for Mage Hand to be able to reach the button. Let's go. So we should go. become invisible first. It only lasts for a minute. Ooh, okay. Okay, how about let's run and I'll cast Mage Hand and then we're running. Like, I cast it, it's right there, and then I'm running, so then it's getting closer. I thought Mage Hand can, like, be big and have all of us on Mage Hand. She's got Mama Mage Hand. That's a different spell. Mage Hand is tinier. Oh. Would Blight work? What kind of damage does it do? Necro- necromatic. Necrotic? Yeah, that would work. You could call the elevator... But you have to wait until it shows up, and then you, so it's a it's a timing issue, right? It's like you need to call the elevator and still seem, uh, or still try and be unnoticed for the minute that it takes to come down, and then as soon as those doors open up, that's when you want to yeah rush in, right? Yeah, you should click the elevator button, and then when the doors open, then like we oh, cast a spell on them, and then get in the elevator before Hunter comes. Right, so. So for, for Mage Hand, it's, it's literally an elevator button. You just have to press it, and the elevator will come down yep. on its own. You don't have to stay there. Okay, well, I'm... So you could sneak yeah. forward, press the button, and then move back as you're waiting for the elevator to show yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Okay. So what? So are you just going to stealth up there, or were you going to be casting any other spells? Uh, like, were you going to turn yourself s- invisible to, to make it seem make it very difficult? I could pass without a trace. That would certainly help as well. Please, yes, help. But yeah. also do some... I should also practice my stealth. Good excuse, too. Well, I'm going to make you do a stealth check regardless. <laughs> so any other spells that get cast will just simply make you that much more stealthy. Okay. Stealthy. Okay, I cast past without a trace. Okay. On all of us. Yeah, that would be on everybody. Okay, I'm going to roll. Nostalgia. So I cast pass without a chase. Okay. So this lasts for an hour. So um, how many creatures can you do this on? All of us. Um, All of us. And like it's something radius. It It's everybody within uh, on you and your companions from detection. So now everyone is going to have plus 10 on their stealth rolls. Okay. Okay. I got a 19. Then plus three, which is 22, plus 10 is 32. 32, okay, yeah. You're, Bam! You are a you are a ninja. You go creeping up. They don't, the fuzzballs. They're very... I feel so special. They're being all derpy and just sort of like walking around, like <gasps> I, I bumping into like, each other and other things. And oh. you get within 30 feet and you... Do the hand gestures for Mage Hand, and Mage Hand appears in front of the elevator button, and ding! And they all whoosh, turn to look just as your Mage Hand disappears, so they don't notice that you or your Mage Hand. But the the button is lit up now, and they all looked at it for a second, and then there's another ding as you can see that the elevator is moving down. Ding, ding, and all of them. Their their weird mismatched eyes are all like watching the lights. <laughs> so all, their their backs are to all of you right now okay. as they're watching the lights ding every couple seconds ding. as the elevator is moving down. You guys, what if when the elevator opens, it's the hunter? And that's when you hear the horn again. <laughs> so when it gets to the last few floors, when it comes here, I'm gonna cast greater invisibility, and we're all gonna run. Uh, greater invisibility. I think that's only one creature, isn't it? Can I, do, I could do a locate creature to see where the hunter is. What if he's in the elevator? Is the you um you could so locate creature. Do you the only thing that you don't know what this creature looks like? You've never seen it. Um, describe or name a creature that is familiar to you. You sense the direction of the creature's location as long as that creature is within a thousand feet of you. The creature is moving. You know the direction of its movement. Um, it just says describe or name the creature, but you're not familiar with the creature. I will let you do it, but I will need you to... I'm going to need you to roll an arcana check to see if you can 
detect the creature with this spell, even though you're not familiar with it. And you're going to need to get a 15 or higher. Why, why'd you roll that twice? Because I wanted to. <laughs> okay, well, so now what? What was the first roll? Uh, nine. And do you have anything for Arcana to add to it? Uh, or that's with your... That's... Uh, it was a negative one for oh, Arcana. Oh, okay. So, um, you cast a spell, and uh, it's... Do you remember what this spell looks like? It, this is the one where you belch, and it's got that... <laughs> that green cloud that forms into a string that goes out and it points it to the direction of the creature. I forgot about that. <laughs> so you belt and the magic goes out, but it doesn't form into the line or the direction. It just sort of dissipates. And that's when you realize it's like, because you've never seen the creature, you're not familiar with it, you only know the name as the spell doesn't work. Sorry, guys. Okay. Dimension door. Ooh, okay. So as soon as the elevator dings, I'm going to cast the spell and... um. We're just gonna step through, and we're inside the elevator. A dimension door. You're only able to carry one creature with you. Everyone else would me, have to go me, into the unicorn me, butt me. backpack. I think you should like bring uh, Trevor with you, so he doesn't have to experience yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best op- best choice. So everyone in. Everyone Except in. Trevor. Except Trevor. We're getting in, Mr. Bok Bok. It's gonna be a little tight. Okay, don't breathe so much, okay? All right, so it's going to be you and Trevor, and everyone else is going to go into the unicorn butt backpack. Yeah. Or should you have, like, a protector out there? I can't. Unless I hold him or something. Hey, I know. Can I do locate creature? <laughs> you want to try it again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, ro- ro- roll another arcana check. Again, you got to get a 15 or higher. Yeah, 16. 16 minus... No, that's it. I oh, rolled a 17. Oh, okay. All right, so you... Your gut starts to grumble as you really start to focus the, the, the energy. <laughs> and the cloud comes out again, and this time it does coalesce together into that line, and it whoop, shoots over behind you, so back the way that you had come. Okay, he's not in the elevator. I feel much better. But where does it go? behind you back the way that you had come so he's coming for us the way we came so we better get in that elevator okay so we're all in galaxy's unicorn butt backpack besides trevor and galaxy yep (laughs) that sound as everyone gets sucked into the unicorn butt backpack so it's just galaxy and trevor standing out and you look over at the elevator and it's one ding away from opening up on this floor. No, don't do it. Ding. Doors open up. It's empty. Do you cast Dimension Door? Yep. Okay. You cast Dimension Door and you step out of the magical doorway that you created. You are in the elevator now with Trevor and all the demon's eyes look down from the the lights and and lock onto you. I clicked the we need to we, roll Dad! initiative. Roll initiative. Dad! Sam, no. <laughs> okay, Trevor, do you know how to fight? He's like, yeah, I do. You have less than ten minutes. Okay, Trevor. Right, Trevor got a nine. Well, I want to tell Trevor. I want. I want. I want to tell him something. T- oh, can you he- don't have time. Well, you aren't are- you invisible? Yeah. Yeah, we're invisible. And it's passed without a trace. It only works on you. Whoa, who cares about Trevor? (laughs) What? (laughs) We push him out right as the elevator doors close. You only talked about it. You never said that you actually did it. You are in the elevator right now, and the demons have locked eyes with you. I close the door. I close the door. Roll initiative. You got to see who acts first. Roll initiative. A four. A four plus what? Three. So you you got seven for your initiative. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just cast the harm spell. You're in the You backpack. are in the unicorn butt backpack right now. So I jump out. Can I, while well, I'm gracefully. fighting the monsters, can I tell Trevor at all uh, to take down my backpack and have everyone come out? Like to just open my backpack up? Well, uh, it's not your turn yet. So the, the demons actually get to go first. So as soon as you stepped out of the door, their eyes locked onto you and all three of them 
jump forward. And that seam that looks like that they were stitched together, you see parts and opens up underneath the fur and their body turns into a giant sideways gaping mouth and jagged broken teeth and a big tongue falls out and they all leap towards you. Do you want me to throw up and die? (laughs) Obviously. Uh, The first one goes to attack you and it gets a 12. What is your armor class, Galaxy? 13, well, 13 slash 15, so 13. 13, good. Second one goes to attack you, and it gets a 15. Ice cream cake! Um, you, it requires a bonus action to bring out that shield. Do you have the shield spell? Because you could do that as a reaction. I have shield. You do? Okay. Yep. So that's, that's one of the benefits of that spell is that you can do it as a reaction. And so, uh, when you do this, uh, I believe it, what does it say on there for the spell? I think it adds five to your armor class? Yeah, five. Until the end of your next turn. So now, what's your armor class normally, 13? Yep. Okay, so now your armor class is 18 for all attacks. So, first demon leaps into the elevator and it tries to bite you, but you back out of the way, you push into the corner, both both you and Trevor push back into the elevator. The second demon jumps in and it goes right for your face. And just as it's about to slam into you, you wave your hand and this invisible shield barrier leaps up and it slams into it right in midair and then and drops to the ground. And the third one is going to attack you now. And it failed. It misses as well. Good, okay, good. All right, so it is Trevor's turn. I hope he decides to take off my backpack. And he runs forward and pushes the top floor button in the elevator. Good boy, good boy. And the doors start to close with the demons inside the elevator with you. Your turn. Ah! Birdie, birdie, Ah! open open the backpack. Open the backpack so we can get out. I open my backpack. and I'll just leap out and land on them. And then I do the harm spell. But it's not your turn. They have to roll initiative then, Dad. Okay, so... All right. <laughs> That's what you're going to do? You're going to open up your backpack and pull out all of everybody? So everybody can die? What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> so this no. is going to be a really crowded elevator. <laughs> all right, yeah, Galaxy opens up her backpack. I don't want to leave. <laughs> Well, if you say you're going to die in a few minutes. You come no, flying not. out of the unicorn butt backpack. It's like, again, you're disoriented because it's bright and and there's lots of noises going on and there's growling and these gross, fuzzy, fuzzball demons are now in the elevator. You slam against the wall. Boom is there. Ian comes out. Mimi comes out. Fat and Deb rolls out. And I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative now. That wasn't part of this. A new before. initiative? So, yeah, not for Galaxy, though. We're going to keep your initiative. Darn it. All right, so Fat Deb, roll initiative. You get advantage on, on initiatives. So this is to determine see who, what order we go in in the combat. 21. 21? Okay. Nice. Mimi. One. One? All right. Should I roll for... Roll for Ian. Ian. And I need you to roll for Boom, too, Birdie. Okay. That'll be easy. Boom has a negative one for his initiative. Yeah. Ian gets plus six. Um, hey, he Dad. Nine. Okay. Dad? What? Boom got a zero. All right. Um, Ian got a nine. <laughs> he, I rolled a one, and he has a, a, my, a negative one for initiative. Uh. All right. Deb, you come out, but you are ready. You get to go first. So ready. I'm going to cast this harm spell. Harm? Okay. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Boom is last, of course. All right, so harm. What does this look like? It's a... It does a ton of damage, Blood, doesn't it? blood, blood. On a creature. Blood, 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 blood. All right, you unleash a vi... Oh, this is the inchworm spell. <laughs> So you come tumbling out of the bag, you flip around, hold your hand out, and a ray beam of inchworms shoots out of it and slams into the one demon. No, and the inchworms all in unison are going, Four fat dead! <laughs> <laughs> all right, roll. All right, so he needs to roll a constitution saving throw. The Mr. Fredrickson's? Or the creature? 
What is balls. your spell save DC? Oh, okay. 17. 17. Okay. It misses its constitution saving throw, so it's going to take full damage from this Yo. harm spell. So you need to roll 14 D6. Whoa! Oh my gosh, my hands aren't big enough. Yep. And, and just to call out, this is this is a six level spell. This is like the most powerful spell that you can currently cast. So this is like Strong. this is your nuclear option. Okay. How many? Fourteen. Holy cow! Yeah. I need two more. Here's a five. I, so the elevator doors have closed at this point, and 15, it 30, starts to 45. go up. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Plus a hundred. Plus a hundred. Fifty-one is enough, and so the inchworm ray that shoots out of your hand slams into his big, stupid mouth, and he sneezes super hard, and the sneeze throws him back with such force, he hits against the wall and then falls over dead. His tongue blah, rolls Good. out onto the floor. How many more are in here? Two more? There's two more that are in here. Oh, gosh. All right. Deb, they, uh, and so the two, they're going to come after you now because of you just killing one of their buddies. Oh, that's cool. And he, the first one leaps at you with a nine. I'm guessing that does not hit your armor class. What is your armor class? 19. 19. They both leap at you, and you, uh, one hits you uh, in the arm, but it bounces off your armor, and you dodge out of the way of the other one. Um, so yeah, they, you are perfectly fine. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, Trevor is going to uh, try and shoot one of the demons and uh, oh, no. you hear his big futuristic laser gun charging up he points it and there's this flash of blue light that causes everyone to go blind for a, for a moment and it's a loud boom <laughs> inside the elevator. Boom likes that noise. It causes everyone's ears to ring of this thing firing off in such Did a closed space. Did he shoot one of us? He missed badly. He didn't hit anybody, shockingly, because of how jam-packed the elevator is, but there is now a big gaping hole in the side of the elevator where his, his shot had fired into. I hate this kid. We should have shoved him <laughs> off the elevator like I said. Oh my god. No. Okay. Well, now what more fuzzballs can get in? kids! <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, Sam, I, don't wanna, I don't want. But we were Trevor. already going up the elevator, so no more fuzzballs can come in. <gasps> I know. Push me into the gaping hole. I'll keep them out. I mean, and the hole—it's—it's it's only about like a foot wide. Oh. So it's like so it's not yeah so it's not big enough like a yeah fuzzball could not fit through this hole. Oh. Okay. Um. But yeah, it is okay. Ian's turn now. Oh. That was mine. Nope, not yet. <laughs> no, you are second to last. Ah! Boom is last. <laughs> yep, with a zero. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I beat Boom. So what, what, uh, what do you think Ian would do? So Ian, after seeing what Trevor just did, probably would not pull out his gun. Uh. Um, so he, pr he does have some swords and blades that he could potentially attack the demons with. Um, he will use his... Battle clock stew. <laughs> Battle clock stew. Two. It's just stew. That's it. Okay. It says it's battle K L A. Yep. So, w X two. So this is something that Ian hasn't done before, um, but in cl in the close proximity of the elevator and the combat and all that, instead of pulling out a weapon, he actually clenches his fist and two. A single claw, metal claw, about a foot long, springs out of the end of his knuckles, kind of like oh, that was he's Wolverine. Wolverine. Kind of like Wolverine, only it's just a, it's a single, single blade on each hand that pops out, and he goes to attack <laughs> at the, the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> Family friendly. <laughs> it kind of looks like he's giving the middle finger. It, I, yeah, <laughs> kind of does with that blade that just pops out of the middle of it like that. I mean. Whose hand is this coming out of? Is that Ian's? It's yours. And we didn't know this happened? Mm -mm. So You didn't is, know he could do this. Is this somehow magical? So It's not no, it's not magical. What do I do? Alright, so he's going to do a melee attack. So roll a D twenty. A D twenty. Eighteen. Eighteen, that one will hit. Roll the damage. Uh one D four and four. One D four plus four? Okay. That would be six. Six? Okay. He gets a second attack, doesn't he? Ah, uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. 
15? 15 will hit. Okay. Roll the damage for that one. Seven. Seven points? Okay. Not half bad. And he does have his uh, special ability called an action surge, where he could get, if he spent that right now, he'd get two more attacks in. Why don't, he's going to do that. He's going to do that? Okay. okay. So uh, do two more attacks. I never realized how powerful he was. Uh, that would be 20. That'll hit. Roll damage again. Six again. Six again. Okay. One more attack. Uh, 22. That'll hit. Ooh, and eight. Eight more. Okay. He, uh, this, so Ian goes forward and just with a flurry of punches, stabs into, into this demon, and the demon looks like it's about ready to drop, but it does not. How many demons are in the room? There are two in the room. One has been untouched, and one has been beaten pretty badly by, by Ian. Galaxy, it's your turn now. Let's do this. Well, ice cream cake. Okay, that's your bonus action. Bye-bye. Yep. So your shield jumps out in front of you, so your armor class now jumps up to 15. Um, are they... Is acid poison? It should say the damage type that's on there, but I believe it's just acid damage. Yeah. It's not acid that splash? good, though. Is that the name of the spell? It's not that good, though. I was just wondering. That That is a, a, a cantrip spell that does allow you to uh, choose um, multiple creatures to be hit by it. Oh, I'll just, it's a cantrip. I've never probably used it before, so I'll just do it. Okay. All right, so they have to do a dexterity saving throw. And 1d6 acid damage. What's your spell save DC? I think it's 19. I think it's 17, actually. I think it really should be higher since it hasn't changed in, like, forever. You, I remember you saying that elves were tall. It's an 18. 18? Okay. Elves are not... My elf... Galaxy is not tall at all. Elves... No, humans are taller than elves. Elves are a little little smaller compared. So they both be, missed their dexterity saving throw, so they're going to take full damage from the spell of Acid Splash. And because you are 11th... So it, the damage on this spell increases as you go up in levels. So it's going yeah. to be 3d6 worth of damage that you do. And remember, to uh, you get to add your intelligence modifier to the damage as well. So 3d6 plus... 8? No. What's your intelligence modifier? Oh, the plus 4 then. Plus 4, yep. So 3d6 plus 4. 7, 8, so 12. 12 Not total? Not too much, but eh. Okay. Well, that is enough to kill the second... Oh. Uh, ...fuzzball demon that's in there. And so that acid shoots out... Onto the, the elevator floor and starts splashes onto both their bodies. They eats through their, their fur and, and the one falls over dead and it splashes onto the other one and causes some damage, but that one is still up. Uh, but you have done some damage to the floor inside this elevator as well as the acid starts to eat through the, oh, the metal no. and the, the carpeting that's there. Not enough to damage the elevator or like ruin its integrity, uh, but just for flavor. Okay, no more acid stuff. Is it my turn? It is your turn, okay. and there's one demon left. I am going to cast Blight. Okay. How does that work? I don't know. <laughs> you have the spell card right in front of you. I know, but it doesn't tell me what to do. Um, do you does. have to roll something, or do I have to roll a saving throw? I looks, don't know. It looks like I have oh, to roll. Oh, yeah, you have to... Um, you, the target takes 8d8 necrotic damage on a failed save. Okay. So roll 8d8 damage. Wait, did he fail? He made his saving throw, so he's going to take half damage from this. So roll 8d8 and then whatever that is, we're going to uh, divide that by half. No, I just need 8. Okay, well, you can do that. Okay. Are you ready? Let's see it. Ah! I got three eights. Eight, sixteen, Ooh. twenty-four. This has to kill it. 20, 30, 32, 38, 43. 43. So divided down, that would be 21. And, that's, and a half. We round down. That's the dumbest. <laughs> we always round down. Why? Is when they do damage or when you do damage, if you make the saving throw, we round down. I like when we round up. But 21 is exactly how many hit points it had left. What? Nice, guys. So this, yeah, so this beam of 
uh, sickly green energy shoots out from your hand, slams into this demon, and it falls over dead as it withers and dies from the blight that you just caused to it. And is Trevor just standing there and like <laughs> he's in shock? He, he doesn't actually look that phased by this. You you get the impression, if anything, he just look. He seems like a little sad and a little downtrodden about like Did what he, he had done. He didn't do much, and he caused um, damage to the elevator. He didn't do much. He, he only anything. did like bad stuff. Well, he, he made a hole. He did press the button to get it moving to yeah. go up. That's, that was the first Fine. thing that he did. Yeah, so he did do something good. I suppose. We won't kill him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Birdie said that. Yep. So you get up. I like and so, Trevor. Ding. Am I the only one who's not going to kill the ding. kid? I like Trevor. Ding. You get up to the top floor. The elevator opens up. And that's when you hear a warning siren go off. And then a robotic voice announces, Warning. Fusion nuclear reactor will go critical in 22 hours. Please reach minimum safe distance. Warning. Fusion nuclear reactor will go critical in 22 hours. Please reach minimum safe distance. Oh, no. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters is a proud member of the Block Party Podcast Network. Check out our other shows, such as Detentions and Dragons, Dungeon Master Block, Geek Wars, and more. 